Hey everybody, how you doing? Thanks for joining me back on the channel here. Today in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at determining the requirements for a branch circuit for a wound rotor motor. We're gonna take a look at the requirements for an overcurrent device to protect that wound rotor motor, as well as how to calculate those secondary conductors from the motor to the controller and from the controller to the resistor bank. So let's get to it. So we're going to start off with the stuff that really doesn't change from any other motor branch circuit calculation. We're going to start with the actual branch circuit conductor calculations, the motor supply conductor calculations, the overload calculations, and then from there we'll take off into the stuff that's a little bit more specific to those wound rotor branch circuits. Uh, starting off after those three with the overcurrent calculations and then we'll take a look at those secondary conductors um, from the motor to the controller and from the controller to the resistor bank. So uh, we've got a little bit of information on the, uh, the drawing here. We have the fact that it's continuous duty. We have surface factor of 1.2, 208 volts, three phase. All of these are factors that we need to take into consideration when doing all of that standard stuff like branch circuit calculations, uh, overcurrent calculations, overloads, things like that. So to start off with our branch circuit calculations, I'm going to highlight this section right here, yellow. Uh, and it doesn't change from how we do a normal branch circuit calculation. If we look at the rules uh, 28106, sub rule 1, it tells me if I'm dealing with a continuous duty motor, I'm still going to apply the same 125% to the FLA of this motor. So let's start off with a couple of current values. We're gonna say this is a motor with a 55 amp FLA, and we're gonna give ourselves a secondary current here of 80 amps. We're gonna work with that later in the video here when we do those secondary conductors, but for now we'll just put that up on the shelf and deal with these primary conductors. So going back to 28106, because it is a continuous duty motor, we're going to apply that 125% to that FLA. So 55 amps times 1.25 gives me a minimum ampacity here of 68.75 amps. And we have stated up above there that all equipment terminations are 75 degrees. So for our branch circuit conductor, we're still going to take 4006 into account if I have uh, 75 degree terminations on both ends. If I use a default conductor insulation of RW90 XLPE, I can assume a 75 degree termination temperature when I go to table two according to 4006. So at table two in the 75 degree column, we are going to select a number four, which has an ampacity of 85 amps. That'll be our branch circuit conductor. Now for our motor supply conductor, we're gonna do the exact same calculation. That's gonna be the conductor that goes between our overloads and our motor itself. More importantly, it's the conductor that's attached to the terminals on my motor that's gonna act kind of like a heat sink to dissipate some of the heat from that motor before it gets back to my overload. So there's some special rules around those motor supply conductors, specifically 28104. Now, to calculate the motor supply conductor minimum ampacity, luckily we just used exactly the same step that we did previously in the branch circuit. So we're still gonna go with our 55 amps times 1.25, still yields a minimum ampacity of 68.75. And in this example, we're still gonna go table two, we're gonna use the 75 degree column again, but for a different reason, 28104, requires that we use the 75 degree termination, or sorry, rather the 75 degree column at table two to select the motor supply conductors, unless it's a class A motor and we have 90 degree insulation. In this case, we're gonna use a class B motor and we're gonna say that it's totally enclosed, non-ventilated, so that we can use that as a point to discuss here as well. So table two, according to 28104, in the 75 degree column, again, it doesn't change the conductor size, but we have to be careful with this because if we have a different termination temperature for our branch circuit than 75 degrees, we might end up with different size conductors and that's totally normal. So table 275, we're still gonna go with a number four, good for 85 amps. So we have our 
branch circuit conductor, we have our motor supply conductor. The next thing we're going to pick out is that nice easy overload right here. So we'll do that in green. My overloads I'm dealt with in 28306. And again, we have to look at the service factor for this to determine what is our multiplying factor when determining the maximum trip setting for our overloads. So in this case, we have a service factor of 1.2 and 28306 says in sub rule one, if we are dealing with 1.15 or more, we're gonna use 1.25 as our multiplier. So we're gonna start off with our 55 amp FLA and we're gonna multiply it again by 1.25. This gives me a maximum trip setting of 68.75 amps. We'll call that the max trip setting. So if we were to adjust this, if this were the adjustable type of overload, we could dial that up to a maximum of 68.75 to have that overload protection. So from here, we're going to move to something that is more specific to the wound rotor motor. We're going to deal with the overcurrent device. In this case, we have a breaker pictured. So 28200, sub rule three, still tells me to go to table 29. But on table 29, if you notice down at the bottom of table 29, just above DC motors, we have the wound rotor motor row. And across the board, whether it's a time delay fuse, a non-time delay fuse, or a breaker, they all get that 150% factor to determine the size, the maximum size of that overcurrent device. So using my FLA again, we're going to go 55 amps times, now we have 1.5. 55 amps times 1.5 gives me, we'll call it a max trip setting on that overcurrent device of 82 0.5 amps. Now if I was to go and select an overcurrent based off this number, I have to pay attention again to 28200 where it says I cannot exceed the values used from table 29. 150% of FLA, I cannot go above that. I know that that number is 82.5. If I was to go say for example to table 13 to select an overcurrent device, I would be required to go down when I select that overcurrent device, which would be an 80 amp breaker. If I was to go up to a 90, I would be going above that 150%, which is against what it tells me in 28200. So moving from these, these are all fairly standard for most motor branch circuits. Again, the big thing that changes when we go to a wound rotor motor is these secondary circuits, specifically where we have this conductor that goes from the motor to the controller and this conductor that goes from the controller to the resistor bank, right? So our resistor bank, we have noted here, heavy starting duty, that's gonna come into play here. Uh, and we have a secondary current here of 80 amps. So starting with that, we're gonna start with this conductor that is between the, we'll call it the motor to controller. Both of these conductors are gonna be dealt with in 28112. Sub rule one deals with that conductor that goes from the motor to the controller. Sub rule two will help us determine that conductor from the controller to the resistor bank. So from the motor to the controller, if we take a look at sub rule one A, for a continuous duty motor, we're still gonna use the 125%. It tells me right there, but now we're gonna use that secondary rate of current. So we're gonna start with that 80 amps and we're gonna multiply that by 1.25 to determine the minimum ampacity for the conductors from the motor to the controller. And in this case, we should see about 100 amps right on the nose. And if I go table two, again, 75 degree column, now we're again dealing with 4006 to determine the lowest termination temperature. Table two at the 75 degree column tells me we are good to go with a number three, which has an ampacity of 100 amps as well. That conductor that goes from the controller to the resistor bank is also dealt with in 28112 as well. Let's call that from the resistors to the controller. We're gonna start off with that 80 amp secondary rated current, but we have to pay attention to what it tells me in 28112 sub rule two. I'm just gonna write that as a reference there. 
I have to use table 28 and it's going to depend on the, st the starting duty of my resistors. In this case, we haven't noted that it's a heavy starting duty on those resistors. So if we go check out table 28, it tells me that I'm allowed to apply a 45% correction factor to that FLA before I size my conductors, which if I take that 80 amps and multiply it by 0.45, it gives me a minimum ampacity of 36 amps. I'm going to go table to again 75 degrees because lowest termination temperature here we should see a number 8 that has an ampacity of 50 amps. Now those resistors are going to kick off a fair amount of heat. If we actually take a look at 26552 it tells me if I have resistors that are used for something other than infrequent motor starting, which is not here, we have heavy starting duty on these resistors, I actually have to ensure that the insulation on these conductors is 90 degrees. Even though I use the 75 degree column to size the conductors, I have to ensure that these have 90 degree insulation. to accommodate for that extra heat given off by those resistors during starting. Hopefully this has helped. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below there. Don't forget to hit that like button, that subscribe button. I'm going to have some new videos coming up here uh, dealing with kind of these one-off types of motors. This was the wound rotor motor, but we're going to do one on the Y delta start situation as well as a synchronous motor and a single phase motor as well. Stay tuned for those, but as I said, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.